today we're going to be doing our annual check-in on Battlefield 2042. So for those that are new to the channel or just, you know, haven't seen my previous Battlefield 2042 videos, basically when the game first launched, or when the game first came out into beta, I was feeling pretty confident about it. I was like, hey, it's going to be a beta. It'll get better by the time that the game comes out, right? Right? Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and, uh, yeah, you know, during the beta, like, I, I thought the game was decent, I was having some fun with it, and I was just hopeful that things would turn around, and then by the time the game came out, that ended up not happening, and it was just a very cold, sterile, lifeless, soulless, just very cash-grabby feeling double-A experience. Even though it's a triple-A game, it felt very, honestly, it didn't even feel double-A, it felt like it was made by an inexperienced indie developer. I'm not dissing indie games, by the way, there's actually a lot of indie games, I mean, if you guys know me, I'd love indie games but you know you, you, there's the difference between the good indie games and then like the eShop shovelware indie games and that's honestly how Battlefield 2042 fell to first just like a shovelware cash grab eShop game but then last year we checked up on the game and it was in a much better place I had a lot of positive things to say about the game between like the way that the game fell the gunplay like it seemed like they at least refined some of it because I remember when the game was first in beta and even when the game first came out the, the gunplay felt very floaty there was no kick to it and I mean, I would say to this day, there's st that issue still kind of lingers, but it's definitely not as bad as it was at first. Like, the, the guns actually have a bit more of a kick and a punch to them. Gunplay definitely feels nowhere near as good as it did back in, say, like, Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1 or anything like that. Like, I'd even say going back to something like Bad Company 1, that game's gunplay even feels a lot better than what's on offer here in 2042. But, I mean, it's still a lot better than it was. Well, and for anyone curious as to why I'm playing TDM, that that's another thing that I had addressed in my previous Battlefield videos. Uh, I'm very basic, and my call of duty mentality tends to transfer over to battlefield and i just i really enjoy uh, a lot of the tdm type modes like this and rush for example i still do play a lot of the other modes like breakthrough and conquest obviously like hey you know that's like what made battlefield what it is essentially or those are like some of the main battlefield modes in fact i've been playing a lot of those over the past couple days just because you know i've been having a lot of fun with it but when it comes to making a video like this when i'm trying to just chill out and have a chill conversation about the game I'd rather play a more chill, ba laid back mode because I'm not going to lie. When it comes to conquest and breakthrough, yeah, I sweat a lot. I'm that guy that's constantly pulling up the commands menu, trying to like send commands to my squad so we can like, you know, coordinate and attack the conquest and actually win. Like, I take Battlefield really seriously. It's funny when you consider that Call of Duty is kind of like my quote unquote main game, yet I take Battlefield more seriously in a lot of instances. <laughs> At least when it comes to winning matches and stuff like that, because in Call of Duty, I don't really care if I win or lose. I'm usually on their XP or camo grinding anyway. It may be crazy, but it also also feels like the game graphically maybe looks better. I don't know if they actually like updated the graphics at all, but in terms of like the foliage and like just the, you know, just like texture detail and stuff like that, like the game seems a lot more refined, especially in like the lighting department. Like, I don't know, the game just seems to look a lot better than it did. Also keep in mind that in my graphic settings, I do have motion blur, vignette, and chromatic aberration all disabled. I just, you know, there, there's something about it. Like when it comes to like multiplayer games specifically, where like, you know, in single player games, sometimes I like some of those guys. I never motion blur though i always turn off motion blur it honestly makes me feel sick to my stomach having motion blur on in almost any game in some games i can tolerate it but for the most part like i just i hate having it on but you know like in single player games sometimes i leave the other settings on if they actually add to it but when it comes to multiplayer games i just i like everything looking as clean as possible i'm having difficulty finding the other enemies which is weird because there is a full squad on the other team ever since this game released though they have made a lot of great changes like they overhauled that that specialist system that they had at launch I honestly never took the time to learn that original system because i just I, I genuinely didn't care enough and i bounced off the game you know before i could actually have the time to learn it because i just i didn't care they finally brought back like traditional class they kind of like me melded it with the specialist system in a way but it's more class oriented which is you know obviously better battlefield 2042 truly was the definition of like if it if it ain't broke don't fix it you know what i mean like or that's how they should have done it like if it ain't broke don't fix it like they tried to fix everything that wasn't broken and in the process they ended up breaking it even more and just making an absolute trap of a game like you know i'm usually pretty e i'm always the guy that stands up for like the little guy you know i'm always the dude that's like hey you know there's a bunch of people dunking on this game but i don't care i still love this game for what it is and i always look for the positives and everything no, no. battlefield 2042 was one of those times where it genuinely left that bad of a first impression on me where even i dipped off of the game i'm the same dude that defended games like battlefield 5 when most of the battlefield community was kind of dunking on it i'm the same dude that you know defended like infinite warfare before and after it came out i'm the same dude that's been defending cyberpunk 2077 since day one you know when the game was 
still like an absolute train wreck in terms of performance and bugs. If I am standing up for Cyberpunk 2077, but I'm still not standing up for your game, you know you messed up. I'm sorry if the gameplay is really boring, by the way. I don't know where everybody is. Like, I mean, y'all see me running around. Like, where are the enemies? There is a full squad on the other team. I've checked multiple times. I've played on this map before. It's, it's usually rather action-packed. Like, what? where's the action? Yeah, I gotta say, this game, there are so many compliments that I could give to the game. Again, we already went over, like, how graphically I think it might be better. I'm not, Again, that might just be a placebo thing, but in terms of the gunplay, it seems like they upgraded that. They overhauled the, the stupid specialist system, and they actually have, like, classes in the games now. They actually allow you to earn XP through portal mode, which I believe back at launch, like, you actually couldn't do that. I may be wrong about that, but that's just how I'm remembering it, at least. There's a lot more, like, actual content in the game. Like, I, 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 I can't exactly remember if, like, a lack of content was actually ever an issue, but there is, like, a lot of content in the uh, game between, like, different modes, and they've been cycling in a lot of modes. Like, you know, I've been playing the game over the course of the last week, and, you know, between, like, LTMs and other modes, like, they've been cycling stuff in, and it just, you know, it always feels fresh every time they get onto the game, please. Let me get this kill. No, the guy stole my kill. Okay, at least I got an assist, I guess. Hey, look at that. We got a victory. I barely got to contribute because I couldn't find anybody, but yeah. They've also just, like, made the game feel a lot more lively overall. Like, when you go to the main menu right now, because obviously, you know, it's still during, like, the Christmas times or whatever. Like, you know, they've been, like, updating the main menu, just trying to make everything feel fresh. You go in there, they got, like, the Christmas background, the Christmas music, and everything like that going on. Another thing I will say, unlike any other multiplayer game I have played, unlike Call of Duty, unlike, uh, Halo Infinite got better about it over time since they changed the challenge system over to like a basic XP system and the progression over there seems pretty good. Uh, but yeah, unlike Fortnite, unlike Call of Duty, unlike literally any other game with a battle pass, Battlefield 2042 is the only game that I know of with a battle pass that actually respects your time. I've only put in a handful of hours and I've already made so much progress through the battle pass. I I'm almost like a quarter of the way through it and I've barely even played that much like in the grand scheme of things. I couldn't give you an exact number, but like Call of Duty, I know for a fact I've timed it before and it takes roughly like two days of playtime like i'm talking like in-game playtime to actually finish a battle pass depending on what you're doing obviously if there's like a double battle pass xp weekend that, that's gonna be a little bit different but like dog just to complete a battle pass for me it's not a big deal because like i naturally just you know rack up that playtime over time because i play a lot but i'm thinking for like the average consumer what about those people that like literally only get to play for like an hour in the evening or like maybe only like two hours on the weekend and they literally don't even get to play during the week because their lives are just that hectic like uh, how are they supposed to finish these things for people like me i'm not gonna lie like gaming it isn't just a hobby this is literally like my lifestyle but i can also acknowledge that like yeah you know i'm in a very fortunate position where you know i my job is literally to play video games and make videos on said video games some people work anywhere from like eight to twelve hour shifts and they barely get to play at all and you know maybe they really like call of duty maybe they want to in and do that stuff but they just simply can't put in two to three days of in-game time every single season and it's really unfortunate if you know they're out there actually like paying for the battle pass and stuff like that and they just can't finish the content because they simply don't have enough time for a lot of people they probably you know they'll probably just hear this and be like oh well that's all them they gotta make more time to play the game but like dog they already have one job why should they make video games their second job that's one thing i'll congratulate battlefield 2042 for like i said i've barely even played for like a handful of hours yet and i'm already like a quarter of the way through the battle pass like this game truly does respect your time and not to mention the fact for the first match of the day that you play you also get like a huge bonus and it basically gives you like a free two tiers almost or something like that let me go off on another tangent real quick this isn't related to battlefield 2042 because as, as i just said you know this is actually the one aspect where this game does it better than even call of duty but i miss the days when games could just be fun and you didn't have to feel like you were taking on a second time job every time that you or not second time job you don't want to be like a second full-time job anytime that you try to start playing a new game because nowadays when you start you know back in the day when you wanted to play a game, you just dive in, like, maybe... I don't know, maybe say your main game was, like, MW3, but, you know, Halo was, like, a side game for you, or maybe vice versa, or, like, you know, you made one game, but you like playing with your friends on the other one every now and then, or maybe it was, like, Battlefield 3 for you. You main Call of Duty, but then when your friends are on, you go and play a couple matches at Halo, then you go back to Call of Duty, or, you know, vice versa. Nowadays, every time that you go into the game, not only does every single game look the same with the exact same shop layout, with the exact same Battle Pass layout, with that, the, just the exact same menu, confusing menu layouts, I should say. That's a whole other conversation. What happened to intuitive menus? Why do they all have to be so confusing now? Why? So that you accidentally stumble upon the shop and hopefully buy something by accident or maybe just, you know, because you can't keep your wallet closed and, you know, they know that there's consumers like that and they prey upon them. I mean, sure, that is more of a self-control issue, but at the same time, I mean, the companies aren't really trying to help the situation and, you know, they'll do anything to milk these players for their money. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait. What is even going on with my aim right now? I'm, I'm spinning in circles. Here's my pistol. I'm, uh, they, 
they don't know i'm here somehow okay there's one kill apollo that was absolute bot behavior i just i i i, I should i shouldn't even play sometimes when i'm playing and commentating at the same time my brain just cancels both out and it just it just it, everything falls apart but seriously like every time you boot up a game nowadays like you can't just do what you did back in the day where like you might occasionally pop into one game and just play for a bit like no when you play the game you almost have that like no matter what game it is you almost have that feeling where every time you see that battle pass every time you see the fomo seasonal events you're just like oh, you know, now that I'm playing the game, should I just, you know, and again, this does go back to a self-control thing of like, well, you don't need to interact with all that stuff. You can just dive in and then hop out. But it's just the fact that all of that predatory stuff is there in the first place. It's even more weird when you have some of these games where it's like, okay, there is all of this FOMO content and there's all this stuff to interact with. And in one way, it's good. It's like, well, what are you complaining about? The fact that there's more content and there's more to interact with and there's more stuff to miss out? I'm like, no, that's not my point. Because funnily enough, in most of these live service games, the content is so lacking and there's like barely any content there or there's not as much as there should be or as there used to be yet there's still like all this FOMO stuff in place but though the, the thing is like most of the FOMO stuff it's tied to like cosmetics and camos and, and stuff like that so most times it's not even actually real content like maps and guns or other things like that it's literally just like a meaningless grinds where you're meant to grind the same content over and over again which there is already lacking of to give you like an artificial sense of content and grind and playtime and stuff in the game even though that there's really not anything and all you're doing is running around getting kills while sliding or adsing or quick scoping just because that's what the weekly challenge says to do another thing that i mentioned before is it's funny how the more that these companies try to implement these algorithms and strategies and all these different things like sbmm and fomo events and the more that they try to boost retention the less that i care about maintaining retention with their game back in the day when they were just trying to make simple fun games i actually found myself playing their games way more and way more consistently just just because I wanted to rather than nowadays where there's a lot of live service games that I dive into and simply play just because well there's a FOMO event so you know I, I have to play now otherwise I miss out on it and then usually once that FOMO event is done I just kind of dive I just kind of hop out of the game and I don't play it until the next one whereas back in the day when it wasn't about the retention and the algorithms and the FOMO events and they were simply just making fun games that were meant to be fun I dive in, play it almost on a daily basis just because I simply wanted to. And then, hey, sometimes I would take a break for a couple of weeks because I wanted to go off and, you know, maybe maybe play another RPG, you know, grind out a good solid like 30 to 50 hour Final Fantasy game or something like that. Or go grind out like a, you know, GTA Online for a couple of weeks or whatever. And I come back to their games and I keep grinding. I'd go for like Prestige Master and Black Ops 2 or, you know, try to keep ranking up in Black Ops 3 Zombies. But nowadays it's just like... Oh, hey, you know, I did all my stuff for this season. The battle pass is done. Uh, I hit max rank and there's nothing else to do for the next 50 days. So I'll see you next season. I know this video went from being about Battlefield 2042 to just ranting about live service games. But uh, yeah, welcome to my channel. I don't rant about live service games all that often. But like what I do do is like I start a video out with like one topic or subject in mind. And then it just kind of devolves into mindless, brainless, just rambly rants or tangents or whatever. I don't rant that often. It's usually just random tangents or whatever my mind but in this very specific instance yeah that, that, that this was a rant and funnily enough the rant that's happening isn't even about the game itself you know that we're actually playing in the video battlefield 2042 which is very interesting because you know back in the day i oh if this game was still in the state that it was in back at launch i i'd be ranting about this game like crazy but you know despite all that no this game is actually fantastic now i don't really have anything to complain about Sure, it sucks that there's even a battle pass in this game or a shop to begin with, but I don't really blame Battlefield for that. I just kind of blame EA and, you know, all the, just the AAA scene in general for making that, like, the bog standard to where if it's not in the game and something is just, you know, wrong or missing or whatever, you know, okay, it's obviously, again, that's out of the developer's control. I, I, maybe there's some developers that like battle passes and stuff, but, you know, I, considering the fact that they're all the same, I have a feeling that all that stuff is just pushed from upper management, but you never know. Maybe there's some developers that are into that kind of thing uh, for some reason. Was that dude even trying? Anyways, if you've been considering diving back into Battlefield 2042, uh, me personally, I actually do like own the game. But if you, uh, if you're unsure, it is on EA Play. So you know, if you have EA Play, you can just dive in and play. You know, EA Play is only like five bucks a month, I think, and it's also tied in with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So you know, if you want to try out Battlefield 2042, but you don't want to commit to buying it just yet, that's a great way to dive in and try it out. In one instance, it is unfortunate that this game has so many of the much common live service elements. But a game, uh, again, I don't necessarily blame the game itself for that. 
And again, it, despite the fact that the stuff is in the game, it's probably one of the least predatory AAA live service games that I've seen in a while. Not only is the shop, like, I, I, I actually, you have to actually manually scroll to the shop. I've never once had something, like, pop up on screen that says, hey, go to the shop, go buy this bundle, look at this bundle, aside from, like, when you first load into the game and it says, hey, there's a battle pass available. And again, even when it comes to the battle pass, you level it up so fast that it doesn't, you know, feel as grindy or like a, like a second full-time job like most other battle passes do. So, yeah, all in all... I, I got basically nothing but good things to say about Battlefield 2042, so I'm just, I'm really happy to see that this game is in a much better place now, and again, if you've been considering even diving back into this game and trying it for the first time, I can highly recommend it in 2024. But anyway, as always, massive shout out, thank you to all the Patreons, and channel members, thank you to all of you in the low volunteer, and a bigger shout out, thank you to all of you in the mid volunteer, my last game, and daddy many, the biggest shout out, thank you to all in the GTA, run events, so much, thank you guys so much, you guys are literal legends, I love you. Thank you guys for watching, have an amazing day, stay beautiful, I love you all, peace.